All right, welcome back to our High Fleet playthrough. Um, just watched back the video from the last session, and things were a little bit rushed in that one. I think I was a little bit tired, so I'm going to be a little more calm and collected for this one. Made a couple of little mistakes. Ones that I noticed I really want to point out, there were actually Zeniths for sale in Suva, and I didn't explain a lot of stuff. Um, Zeniths are a tactical missile that are heat-seeking and quite useful in the tactical fights. Most of the missiles are used in strategic battles, which we'll look at later. Um, got a couple of ships I want to rename in this episode as well. So the first one we want to go over here. Um, we've got a rescue order to do, so let's just get that out of the way. Um, nothing here I'm that worried about. We'll search the radar room. We need to start picking up cipher parts so we can start just encrypting any um, communications that come through that are encrypted. Let's just pause the game and we work a couple of things out. We've got a important fleet switch to do here in a couple of seconds where I'm going to attempt to dispatch the Skylark and the Wasp and leave behind, sorry, the Skylark and the Lightning, and leave behind the missiles on the Wasp. So we're actually going to do that quite now since we're quite close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to order the Skylark and the Lightning just to fly over here, and that means the Wasp will continue on to Suva, and we'll just check that it's got the right equipment. The rest of my strategic warfare fleet is heading up to Goshen. The Sevastopol is refueling in Erbil, and I think we're good to go. So our pushing objectives just now before we begin. Um, link this fleet up, make sure the missiles and things come through, get this fleet to take Ashkelon, and then once they've taken Ashkelon, um, move in and attempt to find the hidden city that I believe is somewhere around here, although it could also potentially be in here. I doubt that. There's also potential it's up here, which if it is, is okay. Um, this fleet will continue in this area here. I don't want them to take Shebad or Kem next because I don't want to make a mistake and attract the attention of a strike fleet. I've mentioned strike fleets a few times. I want to quickly just talk about them. Um, strike fleets are heavy uh, attack fleets that the AI will dispatch to deal with us once we start making too much noise and become visible to them. So far, none of our actions have actually been detected by the AI. None of the garrisons we've attacked have been able to get a alarm out before we've hit them. So the AI doesn't know that we are attacking right now. Um, the strike groups are generally located and this doesn't they do roam a little bit but they're generally located in the fleet hqs and we have two fleet hqs near us what i want to do is i actually want to lure the strike fleet that is in tabal out of tabal if it is here and attack it somewhere in between a city so it doesn't have a garrison to defend it i want to hit it with planes i want to hit it with strategic missiles and i want to try and finish it off with my lightnings if i can that's a hot that's a, this is a big ask i've failed at this before and it's been a failure state for a campaign so we'll see how we go but anyway i've talked enough let's just continue with the game so we'll let the wasp land uh, it has a top speed of 378, so it'll take a couple of seconds to land, and then we'll check that it has the gear that I, I want, and that's why I'm ordering this fleet over there. Also, an important thing, I have ordered this fleet to this location. What they will do is they will land in the desert and stop burning fuel. And I think that's something that a lot of people just, it's not obvious, it's something you might miss out on, but if you order your fleet into just a random part of the map and let them get there, rather than idling in the air and burning fuel, they will land. Uh, this makes them harder to detect on radar, and it also means they are just conserving resources while they're down there. They can continue to use their radar and passive sensors while they're on the ground as well. So you can set up listening posts. Um, we might do that around Tabor if we think there might be a strike fleet there. I'm hoping to hit them in this episode. I think that'll be quite exciting. So we'll just wait for the wasp to arrive. That's our most pressing matter right now. They're just landing at the moment. Let's just check over here. Res rescue's still going on. That's fine. And they've landed. So let's just check what they have in stock. And if I've done this correctly, they should have the missiles. Cool. So we got that down pat. We know what we're doing there. Just to point out, there are Zeniths here. All of these missiles that are available here, the KH-15 and 15Ps, I didn't explain those very well. Without going into too much detail, the KH-15 will fly to a designated location, activate a radar in a 90 degree cone ahead of it, and hit the first radar target, or the most the biggest radar target that it picks up in those sweeps. The KH-15P will do the same thing, but when it reaches its destination, it doesn't turn on a radar, it turns on a an elant sensor with a 360 degree radius. And the first or the biggest elant target it picks up in that, radia, in that radius, it will hit. So you can fire KH-15Ps at um, enemy radar signals and know that the missile will home in on them. And the cool thing about the KH-15Ps is you can have ships nearby with passive sensors that aren't going to show up on Elant and know that the KH-15P won't accidentally home in on them, which could happen with the KH-15. There are other tactical missiles, but I don't think there's any of them available here. No, I'm not going to spend too much time in this window, but I'm really happy that this little thing has worked out. 
So going forward, I'm just going to actually just jump the wasp straight over to Goshen to meet up with this fleet. And this fleet here is going to head on to um, Ashkelon to take it. When it gets there, I need to rename this ship and I need to rename this ship as well. So let's just unpause and continue playing. Okay, they finished. So we're going to jump into town. We're going to land the lightning. It's taken a little bit of damage. Um, there is a ship parked here. I, again, didn't check. No, this is actually a repair town. So there's going to be a Tarkan in this town as well, which is pretty cool for us. That's another free ship if we can convince the guy to join us. Um, people have been asking about the story for the game. I kind of made this LP assuming that people would know it, but I seem to have picked up a few people who don't. So I will go over that as well when we have some downtime between missions. Um, I don't want to talk about it just yet. Let's just get a few things out of the way. One thing I'd like to point out to everyone, we're in the desert, but it is raining a lot. Let's just quickly get my ship repairing. We are a little bit short on cash after spending a lot of money previously, but that should change. Um, so we have a Tarkan here. He is another potential ally to join our fleet. Looks like he has a Gepard. Yeah, it's a Gepard Mark II. So this is a bit of an, an anti-air dominant ship. It's, it's all about dealing with incoming missiles. It has R6 Nadirs, which are a missile I haven't used that much. Um, they're pretty much like Xanus, but let's have the event happen. So a crowd of people approach from his ship. The people in the crowd look quite unlike the rest. They are dressed in full black full body suits with fur trim in their hands, gilded swords at their sides. This is actually quite important. I need to get um, an impression of who this character is in order to convince him to join me. Um, by the looks of what I'm seeing here, we're either dealing with somebody who's high up in the military or thinks a lot of themselves in terms of being nobility. Um, they surround a young woman who walks towards you with great confidence. You re immediately realize who she is. After all, there aren't very many female clan leaders. So. She's a clan leader. I can greet her as a lord um, in the name of Ishu, uh, peace be with her, which is the um, central re figure in the Romani religion. And then also I can greet her in the name of the empire, which is my empire. Um, so we're from the Romani empire, which is down south. It's south of the, the map. Um, we are in the Garrett region of the desert, which has rebelled against the Romani empire. Um, I am the son of the emperor and uh, as far as I know, he's dead. They nuked our capital city just before the game started, and we're on a retaliatory strike with what's left of the, the military. Um, I'm not sure what the right choice is here. I haven't dealt with this particular Tarkin very much. I'm tempted to go with religion. But then again, if maybe she's bunking religion. I'm going to go with the greetings, my lord, because she is a clan leader. Um, she looks more confident, so that's the wrong choice. Uh, peace be upon your house, Grand Duke. I'm Anake, Duchess of the Isi clan. I'm looking for allies. Will you join us? So now we have to play a mini game where we have to convince her to join us. Um, so what I have to do is pick speech options that I think will she will relate to, that will make her like me. And I need to get at least one her to like me. I need to get like three successes. Ideally, I want to get it to at least two. So I can talk to her about why the war with Kiva is necessary. I can talk about how the Romani Empire need Alims to survive. Oh, sorry, how the Alims, which is a sort of a slightly religious faction, inside the empire it's very complicated or how myself is a good friend and a fearsome foe um, i'm going to pick this i'm probably going to make a big dog's breakfast of this i'm not particularly good at this mini game um so she is afraid of me um which got rid of the negative one but we're still going i can say this again but i've already said it once so i won't get as good a bonus for it i'm going to go for just try the philanthropy thing I i'm already like having a bad time here um, they greatly value kindness so that was the worst option i could have picked um I don't want to really talk about the coming to clan of the Romani Empire, but to be honest, I'm not going to succeed here either way. I could talk about this again. Uh, let's just try that just to get me some positive. Of ending the war and why this must be done, of how the weak appeal to justice to undermine the strong. We'll talk about why I want to... Yep, yeah, okay, she's peace-minded, so we want to end the war. Um, this is my last chance. We'll talk about the great destiny of the Empire. She likes Romanis. I might get enough for one... No. She was not going to join us, so I've really fluffed that up. Um, she's not going to join us, but she will tell us that there is another Tarkan North. So that was a huge mistake on my part. I didn't know that Tarkan well enough, and I fluffed up the minigame. But that's okay. She's going to fly off now. It's not the end of the world. We're already doing fantastically well with the fact that we've hit two trade fleets, that we've got the Wasp joining us. I'm not too concerned about the fact that we missed out on, on her. Um, one thing I do need to do, though, is I did get a request to rename the, the Lightnings. So I want to rename this one to the second person who asked, to the lone... Oops, sorry, I'm typing around my microphone, which makes it a little bit hard. I don't know if I'll be able to fit the Lone Badger in here. I will. So this is the Lone Badger, one of our lightnings. It's still called a lightning, but it is the project name is now the Lone Badger. 
and when the other one lands it is getting renamed to the rooster. I'm going to unpause and let the game continue. We'll let this repairs, these repairs complete. They've got only an hour to go before I can move them out again. And they are now done, so we'll send them up to Nahor. There was a trade fleet here a long time ago. We'll see if that's still the case. Um, we can also hire mercenaries at Nahor, so if we make a lot of money um, in the Ashkel and attack, we might actually be able to, um, to do something about that. Now, I am going to start making noise on purpose, because as I said, I want to lure the strike fleet out of Tabao. And strike fleets are not particularly fast, but they also aren't slow. The easiest way to make money is, the, sorry, to make noise is to start introducing my fighters into combat. Um, I could do it at Ashkelon. I have a, a, a an a aircraft carrier really close by, but I'm going to wait, I think, until I'm hitting Karkarmish. I want to find the hidden city first. So we're just going to send our upgun lightning, which um, I don't appear to have repaired. I think it's actually durability damage that we're seeing here, just because the ship's seen a lot of combat. Um, and we'll move on. While we're waiting, Something else I haven't talked about very much is the effects of morale. I talk about why that morale is important, but not why. When your morale gets too low, um, your crew will refuse to fight. And if they actually get in a position where they've been split off, or it's a one-on-one -on -one situation with the rest of your fleet, they'll actually attack your fleet, they'll rebel. So you want to make sure your, your morale doesn't get too low. I've been doing a very good job so far this game of keeping my morale above five, morale above five. Um, but if you're not careful, you can lose really important ships to morale spirals. Um, and they can get attacked by the enemy and refuse to fight back. So it's not even when you're attacking someone, it's when they're defending themselves. Um, luckily, I was worried there might be a good big garrison here. There isn't, it's just a courageous and a slugger. You've seen me fight these lots of times. I'll get through this fight as quick as I can. Um, I'm not going to skip the fights because I think it's a big part of the game, but they're not the most interesting ones when the, the combatants are this weak. And with the 130mm upgun on this ship, it's... Ooh, I do that a lot. I fly straight down on a slugger and take a hit from the back. The 130 upgun on the lightning just makes it a bit of a bully against these ships. Just got to get my eye in with the 130 again. It's quite funny when you hit a slogger, they start spitting around and around and their guns can't track fast enough. This guy's in big big trouble. I think he's lost an engine. Yeah, he's definitely lost an engine. Oh, his spin actually made him dodge the shot there. He can't turn fast enough to track me. I think he's actually going to crash into the city, maybe? I think he is. I don't think he can pull up. Yeah. Oh, that was unfortunate. I missed those. And that was very, my mouse slipped. Do you see, I don't know if you noticed there, but the 37mm from the Courageous actually was actually able to destroy some of my 130mm shells. So you can actually use SeaWiz to destroy shells, which is quite an important gameplay mechanic as well. Alright, we've got cruising range increased by 30% or combat repairs faster. We're going to go with repairs faster. Um, looking here, the main things I want to look at here, I want to start searching um, cabins. I want to start searching fuel tanks. Um... Cabins get me gifts to give to Tarkans, and they can help me get past the really bad ones. So I'm actually going to start off just looking at how much time I have here. I'm going to grab the fuel. I'm not going to bother with the captain's cabin. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to secure the ammo, and I might have enough to dismantle the gun. What else is happening? These guys have almost arrived here. So we'll send the lone badger, which is showing up as a lawn badger on my controls here, which is funny. Um, in there, they're going to do their rescuing. These guys are going to line up. How are we looking here? This is doing quite well. The next job that we're going to be doing with this fleet is actually sending it into the desert to look for Hidden City, which is quite a difficult task. I've done it several times before, but it might it's quite a good thing to show off because a lot of people don't really know how to do it, and I'm going to be doing it without radar. You can use... If I just really quickly jump back to the Sevastopol, you can actually switch, if you look on the left-hand side of the screen here, you can switch your radar to um, ground radar if you want to, and it will detect things on the ground. You can detect hidden cities this way as you fly over the desert. The problem I have with that is that you're performing radar sweeps. Even if you're using the sector search mode, which lets you set a specific radar cone to um, sweep in rather than doing a 360 sweep, you can still be picked up on this. Um, and I just don't like to do any radar emissions at all that I can avoid at this stage in the game. And I'll be very careful about it for the rest of the game. I kind of treat the Sevastopol like a submarine. Um, if it gets detected, I'm in big trouble. So we'll be doing it the old fashioned way with our eyeballs to try and find this hidden city. And it, it may take a little bit of time, but we'll get through it. Let's just check what we're rescuing. I don't want crew protection, to be honest. We'll just we'll search the crew cabins. Um, oh, hello. What is going on here? Okay, I think we found another trade fleet. We've got two different... No, it's just the one from... It's just the old uh, report from before. So we've got three Navarans. We can fight them with HE. I don't need to upgun. Um, this ship has the Ever Ready perk, so it means the guns start the battle fully loaded, which is what that strange noise was at the start. Just give me a second to get through this fight. I'm going to be dodging a lot of missiles, dealing with a lot of 57mm. That's actually all 37mm. 
I think one of them actually, they, they actually shot down their first barrage of missiles. Just have to be careful here. I can't tell, no, this is 57 millimeter. Which doesn't hold a huge threat to us, but there can be enough spam that it causes a problem. There's another missile going off. We'll see if we can get it to hit this guy. Oh, uh, yep, yeah. oh, nice. That's always very satisfying. One left. That was a beautiful bomb explosion. So these guys have bombs underneath. Almost got him. Nice. That was a really fun little fight. Getting the enemy to hit themselves with their own missiles is always very satisfying. Uh, Alright. Might get another level up? No. Yeah, we do. The Lone Badger now can take Veteran Medic, which is casualties reduced, or Veteran Pilot. Honestly, increasing the maneuverability of a Lightning just makes it even harder for your crew not to black out. So we're going to go with Veteran Medic. Um, what do we have here? We can get a Decoy Flare Launcher. I don't know. Yeah, because there's six of them. That's why. There's a lot of money there available to us. We don't have to worry about any... Um, crew survivors. So let's just get the fuel to start with. They're still rescuing. You're still refueling. You're still traveling. It's going to take you six hours. It's going to take you 0 0.7 hours. That's fine. We got a gold elephant from here. Um, I'm just going to secure. I want to disassemble the hull for some repair parts. Um, let the other things expire. And over here, we can now dismantle these for the money, which I need. We'll just get through this as quick as we can. I'll just fast forward a little bit. We've got the repair parts from here, so we will. Oh, still once we do stuff, we'll just secure the ammunition then. And that's that done up here. No, they need another rescue order. So it's the radio room. Dismantle the guns. Yeah, we'll take the 57 millimeter gun. Uh, rescue order there. Cool. They can now land. So I need to check the lightning. Doesn't need repaired. It's just getting a bit um, low and jubile. Oh, we've got an event. A matter of honor. Visiting merchants staying in the city bring news that leaves your men shaking with rage. The doyen of the, the doyen of blank, which is the city, which is a city that apparently doesn't go to name, has been openly insulting you, calling you the duke of beggars, and insisting that you deserve neither aid nor hospitality from the other doyens. The doyen of blank is a mangy cur who has been slandering your good name, Naib. The Alims are wise, but if you leave him unpunished, some may come to trust him. So. Um, our worldview, people are not very scared of us. We have to do something about this because fear is probably quite important in this world. Uh, we'll check our supplies, just see what's available. We've got tons of fuel. I'm not really wanting to spend a lot of money. I don't know if I pointed this out before, but this is an incendiary 300 millimeter round. There isn't actually a gun in the game, I believe, that can fire these, but it's cool to see them here. These also do 20 millimeter rounds. I'm not sure I've seen a gun that fires to 20 either, but I might be misremembering. Got some 100 kilogram bombs, got some aircraft rockets. There's a good amount of ammo here. 130 prox fuse, I've got 31. I might just bump that up to 60, or is that too expensive? No, so I've got some money coming in. In the shipworks here, we've got access to some pretty basic stuff. I will go through. Um, oh no, I didn't mean to do that. Undo. Undo, 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 undo. Cancel. Okay, I accidentally went to reconfigure the, gut, the ship to its old configuration. Um, this needs to be renamed to the Restore. Uh, in. Cool, and we'll exit here. That's all saved. We will let them just finish uh, setting up. Now, I'm gonna spend three intel. We've just captured Ashkelon. Ashkelon is an intel city, it's what the radar dome. So that's me scan again and spend intel to detect things. I'm gonna detect one um, strike group and hopefully it will reveal to me the closest one and it should show me one at Tabal. It didn't. Where's the strike group? Right, there's a strike group at Abad. So they're roaming around this territory. This will be the Tabal Garrison strike group, I'm pretty sure. They are currently landed in Abad. This is my first major target. There are five strike groups in the game. They do not respawn. Wiping them out one by one is much... <laughs> you don't want to do that rather than dealing with them all at once. There are other groups. There are tactical groups. Um, missile carriers, aircraft carriers, I've done them before. They back up the strike groups. Without the strike groups, they're less effective. Um, I'm going to now scan for trade groups. We've got one at Tabal, which is heading, it's landing in Tabal. Oops, we've got one leaving Tabal. It is heading all the way up to Nagar, yeah, to Jaffa, okay. And that, I think, is me out of, yeah. So we've got 1.6 hours of repairs here. They're traveling, they're rescuing. There's a lot to keep track of now. I've got a lot of moving parts going on on the battlefield, so I just need to keep my head around everything that I'm doing. 
Um, they have finished the the repair order, rescue order. Did it again? I hate the way it zooms in sometimes. All right. Uh, dismantle the gun or search the radio room. Might as well see if we can get our hands on a fragment of the cipher. Because when we actually pick up a radio signal, which we haven't done yet. Okay, we've spent too much time at Arabelle. This isn't the end of the world yet, but soon someone will report our location to the governor and strike flutes will start setting down here. Now there's only a little bit of fuel left, so we're gonna hang on until we've fi finished putting that fuel into the ship and then we're gonna take off and leave. We got a little bit of the cipher, I'll explain how that works later. I just accidentally told the Sevastopol to take off, so let's just cancel that. 1.3 hours left on the repairs here. Uh, these guys are ready to land now. We need to do a little bit of a repair on the Badger. We've got two ships landed here, but I believe this is a mercenary port, so that's to be expected. Sadly, I won't have the money to purchase anything at the moment. I want to get landed. Actually, there's a 44 repair over here. Um, the numbers, if you haven't worked it out, just correspond to the repair speed increase that you will unlock for landing in those bays. It's a nice little just mechanic to make this minigame a little bit more meaningful. Um, I think a lot of games would have cut this out, and I'm really glad they didn't. It just, I love an immersive heavy game, and there's so much immersion in this game. Cool. So we're landed. Um, we've got a lightning for sale, which we could buy. I can see it straight away. Or is it a lightning? Yep, straight up lightning. Over here we've got a wasp, if I wanted another one, but I don't have the 21,000 to buy it. And all the way over here we have a capard, a jaguar. So this has two 180s, and that's interesting. That's not a bad little corvette, highly up armored. Is this another Jaguar? So this is the Jaguar Mark II. No, they're both Jaguar Mark ones. Hmm. Not really seen on the Jaguar in terms of action. It, it, the, the gun in the middle is a double-barreled, uh, I think, 180 millimeter, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's just check our supplies, see if there's anything interesting for sale here. 250 kilogram bombs. I'm not going to spend any money on them. We'll go into the shipworks. We'll order a repair on the Badger. We'll check what's for sale down here. We're going to sell these. Um, they're flare launchers, which are good for dealing with missiles, but uh, I just dodged them. So I'm going to sell the bombs. I'm going to sell the flare launchers. I might keep hold of this 57 millimeter for now. Although it's another one and a half grand. Oh, I'll put the money in the bank. I've got a feeling I'm going to be needing a lot of money very soon, um, and I need to do the repairs. We'll just on pause. We'll wait for the repairs here to complete. Are you guys okay for fuel? Yes, you're very okay for fuel. You guys are almost finished repairing, and we can start searching for your um, next step. Now, we can start refueling this ship. It's not going to be insane, uh, but it does need to be refueled. Just enough maybe to get them to Ashkelon on their own, but there'll be another ship joining them while they're refueling. The um, Sevastopol is about to finish refueling. I'm going to send them for now to Goshen but I'm gonna redirect them once I've got a better picture of where they're going and I've hopefully found this hidden city. 3.4 hours for repairs here. We need to keep a lot of a decent eye on our timings because it's gonna be very easy to leave ships in the wrong place for too long. These guys have almost finished repairing. They're at morale six, I need to pay attention to that. How's the morale over here? They're at morale six as well. They're gonna need a break soon. Hopefully I can find a hidden city and just drop them in there for a while before we launch our attack on Tabar, which is gonna be a, a big, hopefully a big battle, an interesting battle. I'm interested to keep an eye on this strike group as well. Okay, they've probably... No, they haven't finished their repairs yet. Taking their Sevastopol a long time to take off. But that's probably because I had the game post. Uh, 3.1 hours, 0.2 hours. It's going to take the Sevastopol 18 hours to fly to Goshen. Which will be like another in-game day. We're only on about day 2, I think, at this point. Every time you switch fleets, the game pauses as well, which is something you have to keep an eye on. Okay, we're going to search for this hidden city, and the best way to do that, if you don't have a ground-based radar, is to zoom in on this view and follow the roads. So we're going to follow these roads up here. I'm going to head to this little town here, and uh, we're going to just see what we can find. The good news is the we have a lot of fuel, so we can spend a lot of time flying around this desert and not worrying too much. The roads are continuing on up here. Uh, looks like there's nothing going this way, but there are roads heading this putting making me feel like there might not be a hidden city up here Because you usually find the roads coming off nearby cities. We'll see if these roads branch off if they continue heading up to the north These are all little settlements you can see down below us hmm. With no sign of a road coming off. I may have the wrong location. Are there any roads coming? There is this road here That could be could be somewhere more around here Where's my... Let's just pause the game for a second. So this road is the road to um, Karkamesh. Oh, make sure I've paused. I just landed these guys because I didn't give them instructions. Um, I'm maybe going to fly back here and just see if I can spot a road over here. 
We need to keep an eye on our fuel as well if we're going back and forth like this. Uh, they are almost finished repairing. I keep pausing by switching fleets as well. I keep forgetting that you can do that. We'll just see what these guys see while we wait, and we can keep an eye on their repairs. Because there's no roads coming up to the northeast, the northwest, which is what I'd expect to see if there was a hidden city up here. So it told us there was a, a hidden city far northeast of Golbagaz, which is this city here. Now, northeast of Golbagaz is somewhere around here, I guess. It's hmm. Are the roads going over to the east, maybe? Maybe it's over here. That maybe makes more sense for northeast. I might just quickly fly back over to Ashkel and check that. What else is happening? These guys have finished repairing. I want to bring them around the outside. I want to hit this again to find a strike fleet. Why are you saying they don't have enough fuel? Do they have no fuel? No, they've got tons of fuel. Oh, they have tons of fuel, mate. I think he's worried about these guys not having enough fuel. I'm not sure why Piotr is complaining that there's not enough fuel in this fleet when they have enough to fly all the way up to Imgur. <laughs> Okay, let's just check the status of the roads down here. We just need to be very careful. We're starting to um, juggle a lot of balls, and I need to make sure that I don't drop any, uh, which is such an easy way to lose a game. So I know there's a hidden city far north of Golbagaz. I assumed it was over here, but I'm starting to think it might be over in this direction. We'll see where these roads go. And that's how you can basically find them. I'm not liking the fact that the roads are all heading north. Uh, okay, no, we've got a road heading over this way. So the roads are your only real indication on the map of where something is. Let's just quickly check the status of our strike fleet. I want to make sure that they are in range. I'll launch the lightning. I wonder why it's called itself the lightning again. It was the Lone Badger last time I took off. Um, it might be because I repaired it, and every time I repair it, I'm going to have to rename it, which is quite funny. Okay, we've got a road here, which is nice to see. We'll just speed up a little bit. Okay, I've got a road here. Got to be careful not to activate sticky keys again, because I forgot to turn that off. This fleet is finally about to land at Goshen, which is great. They're about to hit Gizram. There's definitely something over here, but it might just be a road that connects to a city uh, like Akatag or Timnath, Sarah. But we'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling hopeful. Just have to hope this road leads somewhere. It's funny, the, when I did a little playthrough to prepare for this, I, I like made sure that I could find a hidden city. I did it in two campaigns, and now I'm really worried I'm not going to find it. We'll see how we go. Um, something else people in the thread have been asking about is uh, cursed designs. The Oh, cool. This is an interestingly big fleet. Um, do I want to use armor piercing to take out the Sarma and the Intrepid? Yes, I do. Cool, so the Sarma is our first heavy corvette. It has got heavy armor on the top um, and a little bit on the bottom as well, but you can see it has lots of very vulnerable fuel tanks in the middle. If I can get an armor piercing round through to pierce those, they'll explode and take out most of the ship. Bridges in the middle as well, a good shot to that will take it out. It has three 57 millimeter guns. Looking at it, it has four Zenith missiles. We also have an Intrepid here, which I'm not too worried about, but it does have the, uh, the 130 millimeter gun as well, so it is a, a decently nasty target, and we've got quite a lot of missiles. So the AP will just give me a little bit of extra um, firepower at the start of the game. We'll just dodge these missiles really quickly. I want to find one of these guys. Um, there's the oh, sorry, I'm going to hit this missile because I was just paying attention to the fact that those two missiles hit each other. Okay, you need to get a bit closer when you are using AP. So that's why I haven't fired yet. And I want to make sure I don't miss, because this ammo is expensive. There you go. That's a big fuel explosion. Ammo explosion. He's on fire. And uh, I'm going to see if that does anything. And we'll just come after the Intrepid over here. He just shot down his own missiles for me. We're hovering a bit too much. We'll just come after this guy again. You can see the AP ammo fires a lot faster. The, the actual projectile speed. Good, that's him down. I probably could switch back to HE now, but I'll probably do another burst at the Intrepid just to try and get a lucky shot. And now I'll switch back to HE. And uh, AP ammo is another example of an ammo type that can just let us punch up of our weight and just get a little bit more out of a fight. One thing that's just happened, this happened for the first time in this campaign, I believe, is that a fourth ship has joined the fight. There is a limitation, you can actually only fight three enemy ships at a time, so it's only ever a maximum. Ooh, I took a massively bad hit there. Uh, 3.1, three first, three, hang on, I need to concentrate. I'm really low on fuel and I've taken too many hits. 
I might actually go back to AP. Oh, what am I doing? I might have to restart this fight. I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to restart this fight. Sorry about that. It's a shame because it was a really cool thing that happened at the start, but uh, yeah, that went really badly because I was talking too much. I'll um, concentrate a bit more on this one. I might cut out the first fight. I thought it might be interesting to see like how it can go wrong just by losing concentration for a couple seconds. I need to find the... There it is. It's over there. This ship needs to die. So just bear with me while I concentrate. There's a lot going on in this fight and I have to dodge these bullets. You can tell I've switched ammo by the arrow of my cannon, my in, my aiming indicator changing. So when it's a solid arrow like this, it is HE ammo. And when it is a sharp line, it is AP. Uh, Proxfuse is a blue arrow and Incendiary is a red arrow. Let's just switch back to AP for another shot at the Sarma. That's him down. The problem last time is I ended up using up way too much fuel just dealing with these guys. In fact, I might just try and hit this guy with some AP. I'm just aware of how much money it is every time I fire. And how much fuel I'm burning every time I dodge his shots that dramatically. The good news is the other enemies are courageous, and I'm not too worried about dealing with them once I get him down. Oh, I miss with every shot there. This is getting to be a very expensive fight. One heavy Corvette. Okay, we're really worried about fuel now. You're going to see me hanging a lot more and just doing little dodges like this to try and just eke out as much fuel. We've got 26% fuel left. You can tell in the bottom left-hand corner. I'm probably going to start letting the 57 mil the 37 mil guns hit me. How are we doing? His armor is still not cracked. That was a great shot. That was a... Uh, the shot that's going to make me through the, get through this battle. Down to 16% fuel. If we run out of fuel, it's an instant game over. You're going to see me hanging in the air a lot. One left. So that was only a Corvette. Oof. That was a nail biter for me. <laughs> I did not. Oh, we lost a crew member. Oh, for Private Tim. Whew, that was nail biter for me. That was a tough fight. Um, we still get lots of experience for it. Veteran Gunner, Royal Guard. I'm gonna definitely gonna take Royal Guard. Uh, so, restarting the fight, I didn't explain it because I was really concentrating. Every time you restart a fight, you can do it as many times as you want, but you lose morale. Every time you do it, all of your ships in your fleet lose one morale for restarting the fight. Um, I try not to do it very often. Look at the loot we've got available to us here. We've got the fuel tanks, which I want. We've got two D80 Molots, which I really want, because I can upgun this ship as well. So I want to grab this gun first. 